for maintaining a safe environment, activities of daily living need to be done in a safe environment. This includes preventing accidents at home. During transportation, washing hands and making sure the patient is able to safely function in their home also includes this section as a statement. According to Nancy Roper, while we are affected by our environment, we can also help by taking good care of it for the sake of the future. Generations communication is a large part of a human. It revolves around communication to people. Communicate constantly and according to Roper is necessary part of the human experience. Patients must be able to communicate with those around them to allow their needs to be met. This includes both verbal and non-verbal communication such as speaking, writing, facial expressions, and body gestures. Next is breathing. Breathing is necessary for the human life. Life is dependent on the patient's ability to breathe effectively. It allows oxygen to enter the body and carbon dioxide to leave the body and allows the body to maintain homeostasis. If the patient is unable to breathe effectively on their own, this must be medically treated before they are able to be independent again. Eating and drinking if the patient is unable to drink or eat on their own. They are not considered independent. This is a critical part of human life and is required to help maintain homeostasis in our bodies. The patient must also be able to effectively choose the right food and drink to make sure the body can stay in this balance. The patient must also be able to afford the correct food and drink so their financial status comes into play in this section as well. For a nation involves elimination of urine and feces and thus should be a private activity. This eliminates the necessary toxins from the body. Before they build up to high levels of washing and dressing, this is now called personal testing and updated version of Alcuri. It is necessary for the patient to be able to wash and dress themselves on their own. Before they are considered independent, this involves washing of your body, hairs, nails, teeth, mouth, and perineural areas on your regular basis. This also includes the patient being able to wear appropriate clothes based on the weather and determine what clothing is appropriate for them to wear. Controlling body temperature, the body must maintain homeostasis which includes a constant body temperature. If the body is too hot, hypotherma can occur and if it's too cold, hypotherma can occur. The patient must be able to recognize signs of the body being either too hot or too cold. Takes actions to correct those temperature swings. Mobilization, the patient must be able to move from location to location without too much difficulty. This requires both the use of large groups of muscle to allow the patient to sit, walk, and stand and also smaller groups of muscle that allows the patient to find motor function for manual dexterity and to show facial expressions. Working and playing, make sure the patient is able to have an income if needed to support their needs. Patient needs to have a good balance of work and play in their lives. Stress from work results physical issue to their body from years of stress but patients still need source of income and a sense of purpose in the world to make their living. Expressing sexuality includes not only sex and sexual activity, but also the patient's self-esteem and how they see themselves both physically and emotionally. The patient must have a good sense of self in relation to themselves and in relation to the rest of the society. Next is sleeping. Sleep allows the cells of the body to grow, prepare, and replace themselves so the body can be as healthy as necessary. Sleep is vital for human beings, especially for those who are sick or after chronic health issues. A patient's sleep must be restful and not broken up by pain or breathing issues for it. And that's a role play video presentation about the 12 activities of daily living. 
Thank you for watching and listening.